Hi, I'm Aditya Thakur and welcome to this session. Today, I will be talking about Material Design 3 and Flutter. In the recent Google I.O. announcements, the Flutter team announced support for Material Design 3. And today, we would be looking at some of the components that are available to use, some of the changes that have been made, and what all new features would soon be available to us. Before we dive right in, a little bit about me. I am currently working as developer advocate at 100MS. It is a video infrastructure company that lets you quickly add audio video conferencing to your application. Before this, I've previously worked with a few startups and also have been an open source contributor to the Flutter Community Plus plugins, the Firebase Flutter repository, and have also been a speaker at some of the global conferences like the Global Summit, the Flutter Vikings, and I also create content. I have a YouTube channel of my own with 6,000 subscribers and also a Discord community with 1,000 plus members where we mostly talk about Flutter development and things around it. In today's session, we would be looking at material design. So material design is this adaptable system of guidelines that give you the best practices in user interface design. In uh, Google I.O. announcements, the Flutter team announced support for Material 3. It is now available to with opt-in support. So you can choose to opt-in for Material 3 by toggling an option, which we would be looking at soon. Uh, there are a few things available, uh, number of components, updates to color system and typography that uh, we can check out. So Material Design 3 is largely complete, allowing developers to take advantage of this adaptable cross-platform design system. Uh, which offers this dynamic color scheme and some updated visual components. How do we get started with it? We can choose to use Material Design 3 in our Flutter applications by going down to the theme data and setting the Use Material 3 to True. Let's check that out in action. So I'll come back uh, to my system and open the terminal. I can navigate to my desktop by typing in CD desktop. And I can create a new Flutter project. I'll give it a name. I'll wait for the Flutter create command to run and create this new Flutter project. This should take some time. Once the project is ready, we can open it in a code editor of our choice. I'll use a VS code for this demonstration. After creating a new project, this is the default application that we all are familiar with as Flutter developers. Whenever you run a new Flutter project, it opens up to this counter application. And when you click on this floating action button, it increments the number on screen. The project that we are running right now using Material Design 2, and you can see the floating action button is round. The app bar is colored blue, which is the default Flutter color. If I go down to the same project that we have created inside theme data, clear out some of the comments and type in use Material 3 and set this to 2. Now, if I save this file, you know, there would be some changes made to the application that was running. You would notice uh, the app bar uh, loses the blue color and the floating action button becomes a bit more uh, square, uh, somewhat round on the edges. But this is the new Material Design 3 guidelines. This is done according to uh, the new UI guidelines set in Material Design 3. And it works uh, similar, like if you click on the button, it should increment the counter on screen. What we notice is uh, with Material Design 3, there are a lot of things that have come into the picture. Uh, there are updates to the button made, the floating action button, some changes to typography and uh, the color scheme. Uh, the main issue or the umbrella issue that is tracking all these changes is this uh, bring Material 3 to Flutter, uh, issue number 91605. And this talk is based on this issue. We are looking at some of the changes that have been made. On your screen right now, we have the previous floating action button, which is replaced with the new floating action button in Material 3. Uh, the previous floating action buttons were a bit round, and you would notice the new floating action buttons are a bit square uh, with some curved edges. There have been some changes made to the buttons as well. There are also changes made to the upper app bar. The original one was uh, had a uh, had a blue or a purplish color in this case, uh, but the new app bar doesn't have it. Uh, it's a bit uh, neater, I would say. Having worked with UI UX design a bit, I think the new Material Design 3 is more modern and it looks a bit prettier. There are some additions uh, made. So now you have uh, new properties that you can uh, modify to adapt to this new design system. 
So there's the surface tint color that you can update. Let us come back to our uh, code editor itself. And to start with, I'll increase the font uh, a bit so that it's better visible. Now coming back to our code, if I go down uh, to the app bar where we have the app bar, I can add another property called the surface tint color. And I can set it to something like colors dot red. Now, if I come down to my body of the scaffold, I can get rid of uh, some of the default code that is uh, written here. And instead uh, use a list view dot builder. So I've added a uh, list view dot builder as uh, into in the body of the scaffold just to get this scrolling behavior. Now you would notice is when there is nothing underneath the app bar, it is of white color. But when you scroll up a bit, it changes color to red because we have specified the surface tint color uh, to this colors dot red. We also have the option to modify the scroll under elevation. So by default, it's set to three when there is a uh, something uh, beneath the bar it, it is the elevation is zero when there's nothing underneath the bar but when you're scrolling up and there's something underneath it uh, the elevation changes to three we can modify the scroll under elevation uh, to our choice in addition to this uh, app bar we also have a new bottom navigation so before uh, material three what we used to do is uh, if you would type in bottom navigation bar we could give in we could give it uh, the bottom navigation bar, which would take in some bottom navigation bar items and it would create that bottom navigation. But in material three, we have something called a navigation bar. So I can type in navigation bar. It takes in something called destinations. Now we can specify a navigation bar destination. We can specify a navigation destination and it would take in an icon and a label. So we can specify an icon. And use any of the icons available to us. I'll copy this uh, line of code and paste it a few times to have at least uh, three navigation destinations to refer. To make it functionable, I'll create a new variable call int selected index or more appropriately current index and set this uh, to zero. I'll also create a function to update this index. Should take in current index. I also create a function to update uh, the index. So it will take in uh, the new value and it will set the current index to this new value. 
once i save this uh, you will see like the new navigation bar appears uh, i'll get rid of the surface tint color that you had specified for the app bar save it again and it will be more in line with the theme now so we have the white app bar we have a bottom navigation if i'll click on it i'll also have to add the functionality inside the navigation bar itself so for the navigation bar we can specify the selected index and also um, set a on destination selected function so i'll specify the selected index to this current index and on destination selected to our created function called set index save this again and now it should be functionable so now if i click on call it should navigate to that score and you would see this small uh, neat animation uh, that is available in the navigation bar so when you click on it the button is highlighted and the label is also visible there are options to modify the label as well so if i go down to navigation bar uh, you would see there is an option we can uh, add on to which is the label behavior there are three options we can set it to uh, we have the uh, navigation destination label behavior dot always show by default uh, we can change it to always hide if we want to hide the labels and only show the icons we also have show selected to only show the label of uh, the navigation bar item we select so if i select call it should show, show the call label so this was an example of the m3 bottom navigation now material design 3 also has this adaptive uh, color scheme so there are changes made uh, to colors and themes. So themes in Material U would expand the color space that was previously available. Uh, there are new color spaces that have been added. The new added colors include a tertiary group and a container variants for several of the colors. Uh, the two colors that are being deprecated are the primary variant, the secondary variant. Uh, instead, there have been some new colors added to the color scheme, such as the primary container, uh, on primary container, secondary container, tertiary, tertiary containers, and so many more. There have also been changes to the typography. To, so the typography styles have undergone a simplification. Uh, before Material 3, there were only like six headline variations. In Material 3, there is more a regular and smaller number of variants for each classification, namely small, medium, and large. In the attached image too, you would see there are uh, title small, body large, body medium, body small, label large, and such additions that have been made. So material three is also more adaptive. Um, it should it should adapt to the screen that it is currently on. And with Flutter, since we are building apps on multiple devices, there is a very uh, good cookbook by the Google team itself on creating more adaptive apps. What What's next uh, with Material Design 3? If you go back to the tracking issue, bring Material 3 to Flutter, uh, you would see there are updates mentioned here that are available in Flutter 3. But even beyond this, there are they have mentioned what all is in progress being worked on. So there are components that need uh, that are being worked on, such as the bottom map bar, drawer, switch, and such. Uh, there are new features that need to be added. There are some iOS features that need adaptation. Uh, typography, which needs support for material symbols and documentation being worked on. If you have any questions, you can always look up this issue to track what all new things are being worked on, what all new features that are coming with Material 3 to Flutter. There are uh, a lot of improvements already done, but there are a lot of things that are being worked on. That is it for my presentation for this session. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can uh, tweet me at XD, and I would be happy to answer any questions that I can. Thank you so much for watching.